morning. Welcome to Light and Life program for the third age. Coming to you from Melbourne, Channel 31. Song of Ceylon, a film made in 1934. A brilliant documentary. Talking about the film to Bandhu Disanayaka is Kingsley Edrivira. Kingsley, recently I had the opportunity to interview a world-recognized Sri Lankan film director in our show, Dr. Dharmasena Patiraja. After the interview, we were chatting about the filming techniques and screening, framing and that sort of thing. And that in that, he always referred to a film, this particular film, what we are going to talk about, which is a work of art. According to him, it's a film that all budding filmmakers should watch. And that is a brilliant documentary called Song of Ceylon. And uh, Song of Ceylon, Kingsley, any work of art has a charm and the power to inspire, influence, mm -hmm. and so on. But not forever. Not many can withstand the test of time. Many will be forgotten and will be consigned to the past. But this particular film has an everlasting charm. So uh, I had the opportunity to watch it a few times. Have you watched that film? Yes, Bandhu. I know a bit about the film and I have watched it a few times myself. The film was shot on, on location in Sri Lanka in, at the start of 1934. And it was completed in the studios of Blackheath in London. And uh, it is a really uh, inspiring movie. Yes, actually, although it is black and white, that's the technology those days, still it has the charm, isn't it? Yes, it was Bandhu uh, made for the Ceylon Tea Propaganda Board. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, I understand Kingsley it was commissioned by the Empire Marketing Board mm -hmm. through, uh, uh, they invited a, a towering figure of film at the time uh, by the name of John Grierson. Mm -hmm. He in turn invited this young filmmaker called Basil Wright to do this. It's a documentary showing the cultural life and the religious customs of the Sinhalese people and how the effects of advanced civilization and modernization has an impact on it. Right. You know, the, the Bandhu, the, from memory, I think, the movie is in four parts. Mm -hmm. The first part uh, depicts the religious life of the Sinhalese people and how it intermingles uh, entwines with the uh, natural beauty of Sri Lanka. Right. Uh, I know the first part. Actually, before you go on to the other part, Kingsley, can I talk about some of the film, uh, sure. filming uh, techniques used by Basil Wright at the time? He was a young man. See, I understand, Kingsley, that uh, Basil Wright and another photographer, cinematographer called John Taylor came to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And with no master plan, they went around the countryside and filmed whatever was interesting and whatever took, uh, you know, took their mm -hmm. uh, uh, attention. And when they returned, they returned with a reel of load of films, didn't know how to put it together. It was Grierson who put it. Now, you said the first part is uh, about the religion and and the culture of... The, the, yeah, it's about the religion and also the natural beauty of uh, of the country at the time. And I think from... You see, what in the first part, Bandhu, they show uh, a lot of old temples. Yes. Uh, the statues of Lord Buddha. Yes. And... Uh, uh, people worshipping. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember there's a procession of uh, people going uh, to Adam's Peak. Right. And uh, Kingsley, one of the sequences in there, you see, John Taylor would have filmed Kingfisher, you know, just 
because it was interesting. And then when they went to Anuradhapura, they would have filmed the uh, the Ruan Melisai Dagaba. But Grierson, being a genius, in uh, the, he was called the father of movie montage, he, he used that, he took the camera to the mm. base of the Dagaba and then for a fleeting moment he went to the flight of the Kingfisher and then coming back to the Dagaba at a higher plane and so on, it went on this process of iteration and when it came to the pinnacle, the, the kota, and then, then he goes into the uh, kingfisher flying and disappearing yes. into the sky. That sort of depicts uh, the ultimate bliss uh, like Nirvana. That's, that's true, Bandhu. Though it, the film was, uh, had, uh, of course, uh, common to the uh, things at that time, uh, the, you know, uh, so many years ago, was in black and white, uh, it shows the the tropical vegetation, yes. lakes, as you say, the birds flying, mm. and also some of these uh, old uh, religious places, temples, and all that. You know, right. so it the yeah, that is only the first part. Actually, before we go on, um, Basil Wright wrote a book as well later on. All oh, right, and he quoted quite a lot of examples from uh, this. Mm, film. And when John Grierson was editing Kingsley, he was very fortunate because one of the famous uh, artists of Sri Lanka, Lionel Went, oh, was right. in Sri Lanka, along with another dancer called Suramba. So, actually, doesn't um, doesn't he do the narration in he, this? He, actually, that's right. I, not many people know that Lionel Went is the one who does the narration in this film. Yeah, I remember that now. You know, it just triggered my memory when you said that. Yeah. And uh, so, what's the second part? The second part is really the working life at the time of the Sinhalese people. It shows people engaging in pottery, mm -hmm. uh, wood carving, building houses, and people uh, drawing water from the wells, and women going to the rivers to fill their pots. And uh, so it's really the working life of the people at that time of, you know, during that era. Mm. And the third, well, the third part, you know, this is how it's been built up beautifully, like the first part being the religious part and the, and the natural beauty, the second part being the, uh, the working life. The third part is the modernization, the yes. arriving of the, the colonial powers and how uh, things are gradually changing. Yeah. And it shows uh, the railway tracks. Uh, the yeah, road, right. road construction. I can vividly remember that because it's very interesting the way he takes the viewer on a, from a, a temporal gap because he starts with, uh, as you said, uh, some of the uh, machines, right? Clicking of the machines mm -hmm. and then there's an elephant knocking down a tree and then uh, he cuts into uh, some machinery again with dusty landscape and then uh, sounds of, you know, in the background, it's, uh, it's uh, some people talking about rupees and cents. And also it ends Kingsley mm -hmm. with a radio broadcasting studio, some, you know, and then that depicts the, the coming of commerce. Yeah, that, that's, that's the beauty of the film is, it shows the those 
modern at the time, those modern communications and modern uh, systems, how it uh, affects the natural uh, lifestyle of the people. It shows the, the tea, tea, tea factories. Yes. The tea crates being loaded onto ships. Yeah, in fact, it was uh, for, it was for uh, the tea right. propaganda board. That's right, and, and ships in the harbor, and also Bandhu, the, uh, the roads of Colombo, yeah. At the time, with not only bullock cars but lorries and uh, and other and modern buildings or modern for that time. Can I uh, can I come with another interesting mm -hmm. part of it? Lionel went, being an artist, when he was showing these tea plantation workers and so on. In the background, you can hear a, a raw filth being talked. Uh, by one of the locals. It must have been one of Lionel Wendt's... Uh, yeah, so, ideas. you know, it's only after you just sp spoke about Lionel Wendt that I, I thought about, uh, I remembered the narration part. So, Bandhu, I was just thinking right now, something just came into my mind, is that for them, for him to do the narration, and because it was, the film was completed in, in London, he must have been doing this, they must have done the sound in the studios in Blackheath. Yeah, in, in Blackheath. Yeah. Actually, he used uh, the Knox's script uh, and he reads the text in the background too, in various oh, yeah. places. And uh, so that's the third part. The fourth part, the film comes back to the religious lives of the people, right? right? And then how people dress with this extravagant, uh, uh, you know, yes. it's, uh, these, all these uh, beautiful costumes, the dancers, the drummers, and the people worshipping, uh, offering uh, flowers to yeah. uh, at the temples, and uh, so it is a fascinating film. short period of time he has captured almost every aspect of Sri Lankan cultural life. Yes, the only thing is, uh, Bandhu, yes, I, I, I know I saw that film, film a few times, it's quite some time ago that I saw it, and though it is in black and white, it is a, a, a good, good um, indication of the lifestyles and the influence of the uh, colonial powers in the uh, in the yeah. film in the uh, during the time only thing is that technically although it was good but you know it didn't have the technical advances which yeah. are available today yeah, actually it's only at that time they started <clears throat> the movie montage process uh, you know uh, eisenstein used that in his uh, classic battleship potemkin in the odessa steps he uses exactly the same sort of uh, techniques in there, and that's why Dr. Dharmasera Pachirada said that for a budding filmmaker, it's a sort of a must to watch. Mm. And also during that time, you know, as as we said, you know, the ed, the technical advancements were not that great. Yeah. But uh, they've done a, a brilliant job. Yes. But uh, do you know, Bandhu, that um, this film is on YouTube? Yes. Uh, I don't think the quality is all that good. But I understand that there's a DVD available. Now, I'm not sure about this. No, it, it is. From the British Film Institute. That's right. And it is in the EMS Classics series as well. Right. I think I must uh, see whether we can get one other, get yeah, that it, DVD. It, it get, it, good to get a copy of it because yeah. of its everlasting charm. So, yeah, okay. that's an interesting uh, topic. And, you know, it's... Uh, a film, actually for our viewers out there, if they want to see the, the film, although as I said, maybe the quality is not what they would expect, that YouTube version can be, can be looked at. Okay, thanks Kingsley. Okay, thanks Bandhu. That is all the time we have today, till I meet you again with another program. I'm Mihiri Disanayaka.